When we stop doing, when we start being the church, lost people will be found. Marriages will be restored. Addicted people will be freed. People in chains and bondage will experience the freedom that God has for them. And prodigals will come home when we rise up and become that. And I got to thinking this week, you know, is it worth it? Is church worth it? <laughs> Do you, yeah, let, let me throw something out at you. If you, if you serve in the local, if, if, if you attend church, it's about 100 hours of your year. If you serve, that's, a, that's another 50 some hours. If you circle up and, 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 and are involved in the connection group, that's another, you know, 100 some hours. And I got to adding that up, I and mean, that's about 300 some hours. That's like 48 hour days almost. Is it worth it? In 2033, it'll be the 2000th anniversary of the local church that Jesus founded. I'm gonna be 67. But you know what? If God's not here, I'm gonna throw the biggest flipping super church party ever. I think it's gonna be awesome. And you know what? I, I realized I had to answer that question again. It's worth it. This isn't a profession for me, this is a passion. I mean, this is, this is a calling. This is an opportunity. I mean, businesses can go out and try to fix things with their money. Psychiatrists can try to fix things with your head. Education people can try to make you smarter and, and, and do that. But there's only one thing that can transform the human heart, Jesus Christ. And he's given that to the local church to be the power that spreads that. And so if you're here this morning, here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that God loves you. He loves you so, so much. And some of you are not in a really good place with God this morning. There'll be some in this service, there'll be some in the next service. You're just not where you need to be. Your life's not right with God. You need a fresh start with Jesus in your life. And as I was preparing, I couldn't wait for this moment. And this morning as we take communion, and we take this juice that represents Jesus' blood that was shed for us, and we take this bread that represents his body that was broken for us, I want to open up communion to three different groups of people this morning. One of you, there's a group of you that are Christ followers. I mean, if you died today and got killed in a car accident, we'd, we'd be upset. I mean, if that happened to one of my family, I'd be upset. But you know what? You'd also be in heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, man. You'd be having a bigger parte than any of us are going to have tonight. That's cool. You know what I want you to do? I want you to celebrate when you do take this. I want you to give thanks when you take this. I want you to be in all that, I don't want you to ever get over the fact that somebody gave their life for you, for your sin, for your messed up life. And then I want you to pray for others. There's a second group this morning. And there's those of you that are here this morning that you're not in right relationship with God. And I don't know how to say this except just say it. The most important decision you could make is to give your heart and your soul and your life to Jesus. There's no more important decision than you could ever make with your life. Maybe you're here this morning and maybe you've delayed that decision for a long time. You know all about doing church. You know all about showing up every Sunday, but you've never taken that step of faith when you've known it. Maybe there's some of you here today and you've depended upon everybody else. You've depended upon your good works. You've depended upon your mom and dad. You've depended upon about somebody else's good things to get you to heaven. The Bible says the only way you get there is through a personal relationship with Jesus. Maybe there's some of you that have been here and you've been dropped. I mean, somebody has mishandled. I mean, somebody's been careless with your life. And, man, that's been the hardest thing for you to get through. But you hear a God today saying, I love you. There are some of you that are here today and, and, and in your life and maybe... Maybe you've just put off this decision, and I, I just want to encourage you today, if that's you, step across the line of faith. God drew you here to connect you with him in a relationship with him. Then there's some of you that are here today, and some of you, you were once in a right relationship with God, but if you're honest, you've drifted. You made a miscalculation, didn't you? You thought that a life with the Father, without the Father, was better than a life with the Father. And so this morning, I know some of you say, well, Jim, you don't know what I've done. And you're right. I don't know your story, but you know what? I know his story. And I know that 2,000 years ago, he came and he died on a cross. And my Bible says that when we believe in our hearts that Jesus was raised from the dead and we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, that he will take our past and he will change it. He will, he, it doesn't make it go away, but he will redeem it. He will give you power in, in the present and he will help to restore your future. 
And so this morning, I want to invite you right now just to bow your heads and to close your eyes. I just want to tell you, you can have a fresh start with Jesus as we take communion this morning, no matter what you've done or where you've been. And I want to invite you into that moment right now. There's some of you that God brought you to this service to say, you know what? I need a fresh start with Jesus. I want to give you that opportunity today. And in just a moment, I want to pray for you. I want to lead you in a prayer, and, and man, I just, I, I want to include you in this prayer. And if you're here this morning, you say, you know what, Jim? I need that fresh start. Maybe, like I said, you've depended on somebody else. Maybe you feel like you've been dropped. Maybe you've delayed the decision. Or maybe you've just drifted away from him. But Jim, I want a fresh start. I want to be included in your prayer this morning. I want what Jesus wants in my life, and I want to give him my heart and my soul. If you want me to include you in, your, in my prayer this morning that I pray for you, would you just throw your hands up high all over the worship center? Just high enough that I can see you and catch eye contact with you. Thank you guys so much. Over here, man, there's hands up all over this 930 service. This is so awesome. Thank you guys so much. You guys can go ahead and put your hands down now. And here's what I want us to do, church. I want us, as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I want us to pray this together as a family. Let's stand together this morning as we get ready to take communion. I want us to pray this together as a family. Pray out loud. In other words, all of us pray this together. And some of you say, well, man, I'm already a Christ follower. You know what? It does our hearts good sometimes to say these words and to take us back to the cross and remember the sacrifice that Jesus gave for us. So as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, let's pray with these people this morning. Say, dear Jesus, Today, I pray and recognize that I need a Savior. God, today, I want you to come into my life, to come into my heart. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for saving me from my sin. God, today, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, and I give you my life. God, today I want a fresh start with you. Amen. God, I thank you for what you're doing right now. And as we take in communion to God, as we come to the cross, as we celebrate your blood that was shed, as we celebrate your body that was broken, may we give thanks. And may we take the action of this, the eating and the drinking, and may that just be the pregame, God. May the real game be when we walk out these doors. And we be the church you've called us to be. In your strong and powerful name, amen.